This week on Business Mike, the business of T-shirts. My guest today is Nero Ogwenovo. He's the founder and CEO of T-Shirt Factory, a Nigerian T-shirt production company based in Lagos. In today's show, Nero and I discuss the passion for entrepreneurship that he has, as well as how he built his company and expanded it to Ghana. All this and more next on Business Mike. You're listening to the Business Mike podcast. Amazing interviews with inspiring entrepreneurs. Subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for a brand new episode every Monday. For more amazing interviews, go to www.businessmike.com or sign up for our weekly newsletter by simply sending an email to subscribe at businessmike.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Mike. Joining me today is Nero. Nero, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Right. Now, Nero, could you just tell us a bit about yourself and uh, what it is that you do? My, my full name is Nero Organelvo. I'm from Delta State here in Nigeria, and I'm the CEO of T-Shirt Factory Nigeria. I'm also the CEO of T-Shirt Factory Ghana, and we also have a platform, T-Shirt Factory Africa. Um, basically, what we do is produce branded T-Shirts for um, corporate organizations and all all kinds of organizations. The the unique thing about what we do compared to the t-shirts that come into Africa from the Asian countries, we produce customized designs that um, you can't get compared to those other t-shirts. They usually come in plain colors, one color, but we have the ability here to combine various colors and produce a t-shirt that is actually a brand fit for an organization. This t-shirt business, was this something that you always had a passion for? Was there another industry you started in before you got into it? What made you start a t-shirt business out of anything else you could have done? I, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, I, just, I just loved the sound of that word. And I remember um, when I was much younger growing up, when I, I see on the TV, they, they say this person is an entrepreneur. I, I just... I just tell myself I want to be, um, I want to be like this person. Basically, I, I just love the process of being an entrepreneur. I usually say, it, for me, it's not necessarily the product, um, but the process. So I could also have found myself in another industry. I would still love what I'm doing, but it, it just happened to be, um, I'm finding expression of what I love doing through t-shirts or through the textile industry right now very many people actually have hobbies or passions um that could be business related as you've mentioned but then many of them do not translate into a profit or a sustainable business so when you got into the t-shirt business at what point did you realize that this is something that i can actually do full-time as a real job because of how much money i'm making um after my my youth service um here in nigeria there's a compulsory one-year service you, you give to the country after your, your university education. After that, towards the end, um, while in the university, I, I started doing T-shirts for individuals. Um, the first set of T-shirts we did were for Valentine's Day, and we, we did them, and it was a huge success then. And we were like, okay, um, this looks good. Let's, let's try something else. We now targeted the start to do Christian t-shirts and that was towards the end of my youth service. And towards the end, I just said, um, instead of to go start looking for a job, why don't I just um, turn what I'm actually doing into a proper job? So um, I now went to register a company then, um, finished my youth service, decided to um, expand what I was doing. It, it it wasn't easy though. It was very difficult to, to get started. I got frustrated at a point um, because of the difficulties of running a business, especially here in Nigeria. The challenges you face with um, power and all, all sorts, not getting the kind of quality fabrics you would want. So I, I got frustrated at a point and I, I actually went to look for a job. But I worked for only six months and came back um, to the business. And um, it wasn't really, I don't, there, there was no time. I won't say there was a particular time I saw it as um, 
um, I, I, I'm, I can start making um, a lot of money from this. It's, it was just a process that um, I felt I enjoyed, and it sort of gave me life doing this every day, keeping yourself busy, um, keeping your mind busy, thinking of solutions, finding creative ways to do certain things. So I, I just kept I just kept doing it, kept doing it, even up until today. It's not really it's not really for um, would I say profit or fine. It's a business. You have to um, make profit for the business to keep um, surviving. But it's it's more of I, I have something to to give expression to my inner thoughts, to give expressions to my uniqueness. So it's just something I I I, I just felt I just have to keep doing and keep doing and and I must say I I will say I'm really blessed to be living the kind of life I am today because not everyone um it's it's given that um, opportunity to be able to live life let me say in quotes in by your own terms living life the way you want to live it not necessarily a nine to five job but so it's 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 more of just doing this to express myself it does it does and actually i think uh, just to clarify or add more to what you've said is we are actually recording this interview on sunday and you're not at home on your machine doing this skype call you're actually at work uh, on a sunday afternoon <laughs> yes we, we have some we have some deliveries we, we have to meet up um, during the weekend so we have to work today so it's more of um well the client or customer sometimes do not see this but we we just have to go the extra mile, put in extra efforts just to ensure we deliver, just to ensure um, we show clients and we show our customers that look, these are the best people you can you can work with. So today is Sunday. I'm at, I'm at work. I'm serving God through the expression of my work today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, th- that's, that's, that raises another question I had is because here in Uganda, when someone starts a business, it could be a unique business that not many other people have taken advantage of. But as soon as people notice that um, you're having some sort of success, you see copycat businesses coming up. And in some cases, those copycat businesses end up um, making that market very competitive. And in, in some extreme cases, even pushing out the original person who came and Particularly here, the T-shirt industry is, is one of those whereby we have so many players. And how do you, over there in Nigeria, try and differentiate yourself from the competitors? Because if a school, say, wanted to print, I don't know, hundreds of T-shirts for their students or teachers, how do they come to you as opposed to the other person? What makes you stand out or different? Um, well, I would, I would answer that in, in two ways. Um, first, well, when I started out, um, I knew they were the, here in Nigeria. I can see they are. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. They are, they are possibly just here in Lagos State alone. There are possibly thousands of people that produce T-shirts. And um, when 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 I started, I went out there to register the company. Um, I, I I said to myself. What, how, how do I tackle this? Now, there are two major companies here. They are the biggest. They, they produce textile and they also produce T-shirts. Those, the two companies are the biggest. I, I don't know if I can call, call their names. Then we have the, the, the young guy, young girl, pop and mom shop everywhere. People producing a tailor with a shop. There are thousands of them out there. So at the onset, I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I intentionally picked the name T-Shirt Factory because I can remember clearly I wrote, I, I think I was talking to the people who I wanted to start working with then. I, I wrote on a board, I wrote the name of the first company, the biggest here in Nigeria. I wrote the name of the second, which is also the biggest, another, that's like the second biggest, com- they produce in, in, in thousands, tens of thousands. Of, so you pro- possibly, you probably be crazy to say you want to compete with them. But I saw them as my own competitor. I did not, I, 
back then I didn't compare myself to the people on the street or the everyday young guy, young girl producing t-shirts here and there. So I wrote on the board here two names. I then wrote T-shirt factory. Then I asked the people that were with me there that look at these three names. If you want to produce T-shirts, who would you call first? And the answer was clear. Would you definitely call on T-shirt factory? The other two companies, their names were well, their names were were names of companies, but their names had no connection to what they do. So even if you want to produce T-shirts or you want to produce branded clothing and you see, you see these three companies, you probably call me first because, number one, the name automatically tells you what we do. And even though I was not fully aware of it then, I think what I, my, what I was trying to achieve was to build a brand and not just build a company. And in doing that, I think... Um, 50% of the advertising is done because you already know what we do. Then how, how do we differentiate ourselves? Now, the truth is there are a lot of people who do this, but I can confidently tell you, and I'm sure it's that way in many industries, in other industries, I can confidently tell you, even though there are a lot of people, a lot of competition, but only a few people get to do their job well. And if the sooner we realize that, we decided um, this is the this is the path we're going to take. Um, in those days, the the first adverts that we did, we were tackling the two major problems in the industry. The first was um, poor quality, bad quality, and the second was delivery. No one delivers on time. If you say you need your your jobs on on Monday, if you go meet the supplier on Monday, if you your, your job is, is, is really not yet complete. And that was a major problem. So we decided to tackle it from those two areas. And so even the adverts, the first set of adverts we, we did um, maybe six, seven years, eight, eight years ago, I, I, the model with the T-shirt and I'll boldly put by the side quality T-shirts delivered on time. The quality T-shirts very bold, on time delivery very bold. So... Anyone that sees it would say, okay, let's, let's, let's give these people a try. And then again, how do we differentiate ourselves? Um, one other thing is, once you get an opportunity, you do, you do not blow it up. You do not blow it up. Now, the reason why I'm even working on Sunday, um, we have to deliver about 1,000 T-shirts, um, first 500 during the week, and we also have other jobs we are doing. And subconsciously, what I'm actually doing, even though nobody knows this around me, even in the office, is I want to sort of pass the message to the client that, look, we can get this thing done. Simply because we are also expecting another 4,000 T-shirts from them. So I want to show them, look, we can easily get this, this done. So they will be comfortable enough to quickly give us the other four, four T-shirts that are four times the, the quantity that we're doing, which is about 4,000. I have clients who, who come to me and say they didn't know that they could produce um, this quality of T-shirts here in the country. And um, I have even last week, um, someone was in the office saying um, he has tried some other people and he had to tell me, he said he had to tell me that we are really doing a good job and he's out of, we're well, like the third person he's trying and there's, there's a whole lot of difference in the quality that we, we produce for him and all that. And would I say finally, how we also differentiate ourselves? Um, online. Online is, um, it's, it's, that's the world today. You have to be online. Most of the people who are doing this, even here in Nigeria, I would say um, just about 10% of them are online. Now, the two major competitors I mentioned earlier, one of them is not online. And these are massive factories, big, big factories. The second one is has a website, but they don't have a Facebook page. Um, they're not on YouTube. All this, these are the things I saw and I took advantage of them. So we also use um, the internet to market our business. The internet is, is a major, major, major tool that we use.
the reason why I had to move the business also to Ghana is um, because of the inquiries we were getting. When we launched the website, opened the Facebook page, started doing adverts, we were getting so much inquiries from Ghana that I got on the plane and without knowing any, anybody there, I flew down to Ghana and started the process to register the business then. Today, um, though production is still done here in Nigeria, but we have an administrative um, arm of the business there in Ghana. So that that's it. Hope, hope I didn't talk for too long. No, no, actually, you went into very good detail there. And the key points that I took out from there, um, which actually apply even here in Uganda, were the the quality of service, basically. Some people actually deliver good quality work, but then they're inconsistent. You know, today you go there and they say, oh, I'm sorry, we've run out of textile, we can't produce for you, or maybe they're late. And that alone, despite the quality of the work, puts puts the customers off. And others, um, they just don't seem to have that commitment or that long-term strategy. It seems from what you've said is that when you get a customer, you try and show them that you're a partner they can work with over a long period of time, as opposed to having the mindset of saying a thousand t-shirts equals X amount of money. Let me just try and get that deal and look at it in a short-term approach. Well, it all depends on the kind of business a person wants to build. Um, like you said, um, are you after? Is the does the person just want to do this business and pocket the money? But if if you're thinking long term, if you're thinking, um, I'm I'm trying to build a structure in place. I'm trying to build a proper company in place. You you would understand that um, you have to ensure you do your job well. You have to ensure your major clients you you treat them well and you. You deliver quality always. Right. And you mentioned um, you're working today on Sunday. W- one of the challenges people have is, uh, can I say, getting their employees to do their work to the quality that is demanded. Um, for instance, that means putting in the hours, putting in the concentration on each and everything that they do. Now, you have members of staff working today on Sunday. So how do you keep your employees motivated to keep up with the demands of your client and, and basically keep your customers happy? Well, in, in every organization, um, whether a company or I would say even a church, um, you know, you get to know the people that are with you, that are, how that, and I would say that are partners with you, even though they are staff, but they are not they are partners. These are people who have come to understand, would I say, the ethos of what you're doing. And um, this this will happen over time, as you continue to share the vision with them, continue to let them know um, what what you're actually trying to achieve, continue to um, show them the future, and they they will buy into the vision and they will become partners with you. And also. You, you just have to treat people well, go beyond um, the boss-staff relationship, get, get to know them, be a part of their life, get to know about their family, um, how, how, are, how are things going with them. So it wouldn't seem to be as if it's all about work, work, work. They would also see you as a friend. So with that, it's much easier when you let them, you tell them, look, we have to do this, we have to do this. Um, we have to put in extra efforts to ensure this is done, and they, they would understand. And um, and also on my own part, when when they put in extra effort, I, I must confess for me, it's I I really do not like the let's say the the staff would now come and say, oh okay, if I have to work on Sunday, and um, you have to pay me extra and you have to pay me over time for this. Well, it's, it's actually correct, but right from the beginning, I've always wanted and I've always emphasized that I, because that's what I do, people should work from their hearts. And I say, just, just leave, would I say, just leave it to me. I'm not blind. I can see who is putting an extra effort, who is not putting an extra effort. Then and life would, would pay you. You you can't you can't escape it. The person that gives more will get more. Even if I do not, even if I make the mistake of not rewarding you accordingly, life life would reward you. Um, 
So I, I just I, I let them know that you have to work from your heart, and at the same time, I also will, should also reward from from my heart. I, I I pay I pay the school fees of some of my staff. I help them with um, um, the school fees of their children. Um, I help with um, their house rents, and they know that if they have a challenge that is beyond them, I I am I would do what. I can to the best of my ability to ensure that I'm able to support them. And, and so once there is that trust, um, when you tell them to work extra, they, um, they, they will be willing to give extra. Of course, there are the people who, who, are, who are there just for the money. You know those people. You know how you relate with them. And for someone with the mindset of, like I tell them, for me, I'm not after the money. I don't even take a salary from the business. I used to take back then, but, but I don't. Of course, um, if, if, if there's something that, that's an emergency that I have to take care of, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take a salary for that. But I, I do not take a salary like every month I have. No, no, I don't. My concern, my 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 joy is is the business is growing the business that is the payment i enjoy getting that the business is expanding because of today the people working today on sunday i've not even told them they they don't even know they'll probably be getting double of your salary um, at the end of this month or, or next month let's just ensure we um quickly execute this job that we have on ground so it's you have to know your people and you have to keep talking to them, keep sharing the vision, helping them to understand the importance of work. Let them have a very good um, work ethic. It's 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 not even just about working here in Teachers Factory. In life, you have to you have to work hard. You have to you have to give extra to get extra. So that's that's I let them know. I let them know. And I I'm not just practicing what I I I'm not just preaching what I. Do not practice. I worked in the ad agency when I, I said I, I worked for six months. I, I work on Sundays. It wasn't my business. And it was quite a distance from where I live. I go all the way. Even the bus does not come on Sunday. I work on Saturdays. I work on Sundays just to ensure I get the, the job done. Today, I do the same for my business. So it's not necessarily doing it for T-shirt factory. Wherever you are, you have to be willing to work. That's a hundred percent right because it's very difficult for someone to say, "I'm going to work between you know nine and five, and I'll do the bare minimum." But maybe after five, if it's my own thing, I'll give it a hundred percent. The mind works in such a way that if you're not giving a hundred percent for a particular activity, it will suddenly switch and give a hundred percent for another. It's much sharper if you're giving a hundred percent for everything. As a human being, it makes you work at a, a higher level than anyone else. So. In everything you do, personally, I would encourage um, people to give 100%, whether it's your business or not, because you become better and sharper as a person. Right. Now, we were having a, a discussion just before we started the interview about uh, some of the challenges that uh, T-shirt makers here in Africa have, particularly with uh, China having much cheaper products. Now, from your experience, um, why is there such a big challenge for us in terms of creating the fabric here in Africa and, and how can we as Africans try and narrow the gap, especially in terms of people who want fabrics from China having the options of buying them here on the continent? The infrastructure is not there. The government is it's not doing what it's supposed to do fully in most cases. Not that they are not they are, of course there are some that are, that are trying, even here in Nigeria, a few of the past like the past um, governments put certain things in place to help young entrepreneurs. This is just starting, so we are waiting to see what they would do. For the Chinese, I, they, they have the structure, the, the government supports, I hear the government even funds some of the companies that come down here to execute huge, huge contracts. So in Africa, the, the, the infrastructure is, is a big problem. It's a big problem, that, that I must say. Final question is, how would you, or rather, what advice would you give to anyone that's planning on getting into this particular industry of T-shirts? You, you have to know how to work with people. Since you will not be the one, it depends on how you want to 
um, execute. For me, I I said to myself, um, how many how many t-shirts can you produce by yourself in a day? I I said if I'm the only person sewing, doing cutting, I won't be able to produce a, a, a good number. So I said to myself, wouldn't it be better you partner with people who know how to do this and concentrate on what you you can do, which is building a brand, building a business. So, and the only way to achieve that, I have, I have to work with people. So you have to have good relationships with people, know how to treat people. Basically, good leadership, um, qualities, you, you have to develop that. You have to know how to also relate with clients. It's it's all about people. It goes beyond just the t-shirt business. Any business, you have to know how to manage relationships and, and treat people well and um, know how to basically know how to relate, relate with people. Then always ensure you're coming to deliver quality. There is no there is no shortcut to it. It is those that produce quality that will be in business in, in the long run. So ensure you're here to produce quality. Do a lot of research. Always update your knowledge. Understand what is happening around you so that it will enable you to make the right decisions concerning the, the business. If you were cast away to a desert island somewhere far, what book would you take with you? What movie would you take with you? And what song would you take with you? <laughs> that, that's a difficult one. What book would I take with me? Must it be one? Can I say maybe a few books that I have? Um... All right, fine. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> if you allowed a few. I would take Discover the Power Within You, which is, um, I think it's by Eric Butterworth. And um, one of the books that really influenced me back then the rich dad poor dad series um a movie um i'll take 300 <laughs> sparta um x and um, it's um the, the movie about malcolm x played by denzel washington those are two movies that um and i i don't mind taking avatar too and um, not necessarily because of the this movie is not necessarily because of the the, the story or but the, how would I put it, the expression of the mind of man at work, if I put it that way. You see how creativity was able to, to bet something um, as, as good as that. For, for a movie like Avatar, sure. Then for a song, um, I'll, I'll just say classical music. I, I just like good music. Um, in recent times, I've been listening to the songs I enjoyed when I was quite young. Uh, Puff Daddy, um, B.I.G. and all those, those those cool cool jams. If I if I put it that way, cool music to think. I, I like listening to classical and um, classical music and songs of nature. If if I put it like sounds of nature. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Nero, to chat with us today. And uh, we've certainly learned a lot from you. How can we learn more about yourself and uh, the T-Shirt Factory on uh, social media or our website? You can, you can find us on Facebook. Just search for T-Shirt Factory Nigeria. And also search for T-Shirt Factory Ghana and T-Shirt Factory Africa. Um, on our website, www.tshirtfactory.ng. You can also... And get more information about us um, www.tshirtfactory.africa.com. That is um, for T-Shirt Factory Africa, which is the platform we we use to reach um, African countries. And interestingly, um, we have people from abroad, United States. Just last week, we sent T-shirts to the United States. We also sent. And um, this week, I'm expecting someone from France who will produce T-shirts for his coming over to see how we can have a, a very strong relationship and produce some African um, tops, African T-shirts that he can sell over there in France. So, all for that, all that is from T-shirt factory. Email info at t-shirtfactory.ng or info at t-shirtfactory.africa.com. Twitter, you can search for T-shirt factory Nigeria. 
or just go on Google and just type T-shirt factory in Nigeria. You'll definitely find us. And I'll also have all that information on uh, the website, which is uh, businessmike.com forward slash T-shirt factory. So I'll put everything you've mentioned there, all the links um, to your social media, website and email as well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Nero, once again for taking the time on this uh, Sunday afternoon uh, to chat with me. I really appreciate it and I wish you the very best with the T-shirt factory. Thank you so much and thank you for the, for the work you're doing for entrepreneurs. Um, one way or the other, you're giving us exposure here in Africa, and, and it's one major thing we need. So, so thank you on behalf of entrepreneurs in Africa. Thanks for listening to the Business Mike podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions or feedback, you can reach me on Twitter at Daudi Mugabe, on Facebook at Business Mike, or email. That's Dowdy at businessmike.com. Don't forget, we have a brand new episode every Monday. And until then, take care.